and we're recording. Um, it is so damn nice to be kind of in the same room with you. It's been a long time. Feels good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, this is where it all started for me. You've been, um, you've been all over the place. I've, I've been watching you in, um, in like your, your Facebook and your social media. You want to shout out where you're at and where, how people can find you? Um, I'm Coach Eastman8 on Instagram or mm -hmm. Eastman Fitness and Wellness on Facebook. Um, we're located in Centerville, Utah. And it's Eastman Fitness and Wellness. The fitness throws people off. We do, ha we do workouts and things like that, but a majority of what I do is uh, life transformations. So the mind, body, and soul is a big focus on who and what I do because my life, I spent most of it being a drug addict and uh, a lot of behavior modifications have had to come along the way. So, I've admired your transformation and I've really admired the work that you're doing and I'd love to get into all of it. Can we go back a little ways and start kind of where you and I met? I remember meeting you years ago in your motorcycle shop and that was so fun for me because you had this really tricked out 250 <laughs> that you let me ride, yeah. which was a big deal because I didn't know how to ride back then. And he let me just take this tricked out, really hopped up 250 and it was scary fast. Yeah. It was awesome. But that's kind of all I knew of you. Other than Danielle, I knew your sister and, and uh, brother-in-law at the time. And um, anyway, you came in one time and you didn't look like this. You, you didn't, I mean, you're, you're buff and then like <laughs> you're in good shape. But I didn't think you looked that good and you didn't look super healthy. Yeah. Um, I think you look a lot better now. And um, what brought you in? Can you go all the way back and just talk about your addiction? Sure. And the reason I bring this up, Rob, is I believe that um, I believe that addiction recovery, and I don't know anything about it, but I believe that addiction recovery has a lot of transfer to just behavioral change. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But if if we could, could we go back and just talk at first about what brought you in and, and a little bit about your addiction and etc. Sure. So mine played a big part in growing up, being bullied at a young age. Um, and in elementary school, when you're bullied, you start to believe those things, that you're ugly, that you're stupid, that you're not worth it. And you either crumble or you get really good at wearing what I call wearing masks pretending to be something you're not to be with this group so they don't pick on you and then switching masks to be with these people and and really becoming a lot of things other than yourself. So the first time I smoked weed was in high school and my depression, my anxiety, my self-hatred, it all went away. And uh, I was like, okay, now here we go. This is what I've always needed. The only time I ever felt good was when I was playing sports. And uh, that's not 24 hours a day right you know a couple times a week and so what the people who introduced me to weed didn't tell me is that the way I felt the first time would never happen again that I would need to smoke more that I would need to drink more that I would need to take more pills in order to numb the pain out and eventually by that time when you figure out that you have an issue you're pretty uh, physically dependent on it and then the mental game comes in and you a lot of times literally feel like you're gonna die if you don't have it so choosing between relationships or my drugs I chose the drugs every time so it got bad it was everything from drugs alcohol porn you know you name it I numbed out with it and uh, when I met you here I had just gotten out of rehab and uh, my daughter was seven months old and I tell people I got to the point where my couch castle wouldn't contain her anymore because I'm I'm barely able to take care of myself and now I've got this little baby that's making noises and crawling around and I it looked kind of like being at the zoo like a wild animal like I, I'm not I'm not a father I, I may have got a girl pregnant but I don't know the first <laughs> thing about being a father you know I can't believe people are allowing me to be with this kid all by myself and <laughs> And I let her out of the cage, if you may, and she wore me out. And I knew that my sister trusted you. 
and I wanted to come in and see what it was about and I remember you telling me and I was in a you know I was pretty sick still I've I went into rehab at 128 pounds yeah. because of my cocaine and meth addictions I had depleted my system so much but when I came out I wasn't eating right I was still smoking and I came in and we talked about it a little bit and I shared that I was an addict and and uh, and I remember you smiling at me and saying hey don't stop smoking meaning once you get training with me you're gonna want to smoke all or you're gonna want to stop all on your own and uh, I was in a pretty bad way and insecure and one day we were standing by the door and he said look make me a deal no matter how bad you don't want to come show up and if I can't talk you into staying then you get to go and you wanted me to be accountable to that and that was the big thing for me to show up to be around in a group of people that I was you know they weren't judging me but I was so used to being judged for my addiction and things that it was scary to go into a new room and uh, that is really the beginning of the beast that you planted inside of me of I thought I was gonna come in and get fit and you took me under your wing and preached your philosophies and I fell in love with it hmm. you know you're telling talking to me about leg days and pioneers I found that so fascinating and and really it just sent me on a journey that you you know you've seen on my on my social media of going across the world becoming an ultra marathoner becoming an MMA fighter um, Mount Everest you know all of these different things that um, doing hard things in a safe environment facing your fears um, all the things that you talked to me about early in my recovery that I uh, took to the extreme <laughs> I, I don't remember saying most of that I'm so like I'm, I'm excited to hear that you know some of my rhetoric that I spew out all the time I'm excited to hear some of that had an impact but and, and I thank you yeah for for telling me that that's that means a lot to me I always wondered what the what the tie is you give me some credit sometimes and I don't ever feel like I deserve it like sometimes I'll see a little post that you'll throw out and I, I don't feel like I deserve it and I I always wonder what you're thinking and it's fun for me to hear that so thanks for sharing that. it's like in that in my early recovery my wife left me the day I got out of rehab the bank came in and took everything I owned and then my dad passed away all in yeah. the first nine months so you were that father figure you were that voice I I'd, I'd been so sick of hearing about from my brother and I love you Drew and my mom and all those people that had been in my life but coming from this male figure that had zero to gain from taking me under his wing and and teaching me that man I it, it very well could have been the reason I stayed sober in no. early recovery I doubt that I, I'm so I'm so grateful you'd say that and too. that's why I like you say you didn't know anything about addiction I'm glad you're saying that because I'm telling you somebody who does that little bit of love you gave me changed my life I'm, I'm so I'm touched yeah I'm touched to hear that and I can't thank you enough and I'm so proud of your success because you've gone on to, to really become something like <laughs> I had to put the fire out. I lit Davis County on fire, and I figured it was only fair that I put it out. Right. I feel like that a lot. <laughs> I feel like that a lot. Um, is there, in your mind, is there a lot of crossover? One of the things that I like to do is I want to find out, first of all, like what your message is. What are you trying to put out? Because I get a lot of it. I, I think I know your message. And um, we have real similar values, I think, in that way. And I'm not going to sit and take all, all your credit. Like, I'm, I'm going to get choked up about it, but I'm not going to take your credit because I think all of that, all I really do in here is I just reflect a person's own self back upon them. I, I do. I think that's just who you came in as. And whatever you think I said to you is probably just the stuff that you needed to hear um, that you were putting out. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I knew that much. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Yeah. Like, you ever notice that a person will come in and they'll change their lives? They'll, they'll do these things where they'll, um, th they will just stomp a workout. And then they'll stomp their nutrition and they'll drop 60, 70, 80 pounds. And you're like, 
you know, there's not a thing I could have done to have prevented them from getting there. Like, they just came in on fire. That's who you were. They just came in. They were ready to do it. And I could have messed it all up and probably did, but they still were going to do it. They just chose here and now. You ever notice? Yeah. I think that's a thing. Uh, not that I don't want to take a little of that credit, but I just think you came in ready. I think you came in hungry. You... There's, there's a lot of... Uh... And, and early on, one thing you taught me as well is hardly anybody comes in for fitness. It's right. either they feel bad about themselves, their husband called them fat. You know, it, there's so much more to it. And that's where I feel like whether you planted my seed, watered my seed, or with the sun on it. Yeah. You know, it's still your seed. There's so, and many still avenues. Yeah. there's so many avenues that, you know, I laugh at the hairdressers. They give out so much information to people they should probably get some kind of certification <laughs> because a lot of those women getting their hair dyed or braided it up take it to heart and take it home to their husbands that's right and uh it's the same i think it, trainers and especially in there's you know there's the vasa trainer whatever you go in you do chest back whatever when you come into these places there's so much more that goes into it i think and uh it's a life guide for a lot of people yeah it's whether a it be example um it just made a, a major impact and I knew that I needed that and I knew that what you gave me helped give me the confidence to take what was in me and share it with my fellow addicts and that's bled into you know now coaching junior high wrestling yeah, and congratulations on that. and then bountiful high wrestling yeah so, congratulations on that that's a big you. deal my boys go to to bountiful high and he's um, he'll come look you up when when it's time. Good. He's he's real physical. He's gonna he's gonna need some help. Good. Um, what is so your nine years? I just saw online your nine years. Yep. Nine years clean and sober. September first was nine years clean and sober, which is insane for me. I was I ended up being an IV drug user. Wow. Um, and I couldn't which go. Is, is that one of the worst? Is that one of the hardest yeah. ones to recover from? It's uh, the quickest withdrawals, the best opportunity for death because you're bypassing, you're going straight to the bloodstream. Um, and it is the most ugly to the community. You're the real, real, pe can I swear? You're a real piece of shit if you shoot up and you're walking around with bruised arms and things like that. You know, yeah. you can hide your drinking if you drink at home or smoke weed in the corner, but when you get to that point, uh, pretty much look homeless <laughs> yeah and that's what people perceive that as but it was just the only way that that I could kill the pain for the few minutes that that lasted I didn't get to see you back then um, I, I've heard the stories mostly from you and um, all I remember is the astounding progress I remember you came in and within a month or two you loaded up my rack over there and put a bench under it and like pressed first time you pressed 225 I was like that guy's kind of too little like you like you were you were kind of little and didn't weigh a lot and I was like you know you're about my height and and you weren't even quite as big as I am and, and I'm not big you're way bigger now and you're putting up 225 well there was like good hell boy and then a month later no more than a month later it was three blades like you went up 90 pounds in like a month and I was like well I've even got pictures of it where you're putting up some big weight. I can't believe how fast your transformation happened. Um, do you have secrets? What are your secrets? If a person, let's, can we, maybe we can steer it toward um, people that are just getting in shape or they don't believe in themselves or they, they really, maybe they got bullied or they're bullying themselves. I don't know how that works. Yeah. But um, can we gear it toward them and then maybe if there's an addict out there, you need to look Rob up. If you know somebody that's an addict, look Rob up. He can help you. Um, what are the secrets? What are the steps? Teach me. For me, that accountability that you gave me that day of just showing up, I still use that to this day mm -hmm. so that people can come in here and see that it's not that scary. All the lies that they're telling themselves when they're putting on the clothes that don't fit or deciding whether or not they're going to come here and get in the cold sweats and you know, really just letting the insecurities and anxiety take over. Um, just show up. We can help you do the rest. 
Yeah, get that, your ass through the door. That's, that's all I that's ever it. tell people. Get your that's ass it. through that door. If you get here and don't like it, go home. But you get your ass through the door. That's why I think like the, the big box gyms, they're good for 5% of the community. The other 95 that go there look the same as they did five years ago. Yeah. And there's not the accountability and knowing like the friendships that I built here and the camaraderie and things like that. Half the time I came just to see my friends. Yeah. It wasn't about the workout. And that gave me hope on the, you know, on the good days, I was there for somebody else on the bad days. They were there for me. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got this tattoo that is very special to me. And it says it is better to stand and fight. If you run, you will only die tired. Yeah. And I spent so many years running from bullies, running from my depression, running from my anxiety, and then running from my addiction that it almost killed me. And now I just show up and let God do the rest. Just get your butt through the door. So step one is show up. Show up. What's next? next? What, what do you got to do next? Or what do you, what do you tell your people? Um, baby step. Not overdoing it. Right. Under, under train yourself until you're ready to go. I want everybody to leave the gym feeling like, oh, I could have done way more. And then a day later, they call me and say, thank you so much for not letting me do more. <laughs> right? You get that ego or you get that adrenaline being around a new group of people and you go ham on the workout and then we don't see you for six months. Or never again. Yeah. You chicken out. It makes you worse. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a temporary fix. Diets. That's a temporary fix. It's, it needs to be a lifestyle change. And that's the, if what we prescribe you know you can't do long term, then tone it down a little bit. Talk to us about that. Communicate it. Um, and uh, the other big one is, is I try and be the, the weakest link in the room. What do you mean? I mean, as a coach, and I own my own gym, but I love training with other coaches. I love their philosophies. I love to not be the strongest guy because then I'm not pushing as hard as I can. I'm competitive. I like. I want to get in a room with a bunch of fast people or a bunch of strong wrestlers or a bunch of good fighters, and get tuned up. You know. Yeah. So that it gives me that taste in my mouth of of not defeat, but of okay. Now let's go. I don't. You know. I don't like losing. And that. And I think everybody's got that in them. Whether it be fitness is just. That's just part of life. You've got to be fit in order to enjoy doing anything. Right. You know, you hear it all the time. The, the pain of being overweight is far less, or the pain of working out is far less than the pain of being overweight. Man, think about all the pills you take because of your, your what do they call that, reflux or yeah. stomach Asthma. acids or and blood pressure, blood pressure and diabetes. diabetes. And it's like, if you can just do a little bit each day, and that comes down to, to addiction. So... I don't think anybody ever just like raised their hand in sixth grade when they say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And said, I want to be a drug addict. <laughs> I want to be a dope dealer. <laughs> like that doesn't happen. What happens is life happens and the pain kicks in and we either weren't taught or we weren't educated about real life and given the right skills to be able to combat those emotions at a young age. And then I would say 90% of the people I deal with, it's just a dual diagnosis, meaning that they were self-medicating with street drugs because either they didn't have insurance or they didn't want it to be numbed out like gray zone on some antidepressant or whatever. And they found drugs until drugs took over. So everybody's got that fire inside. Everything, everybody's got that thing that makes them tick. And being able to get the strength I need in mind, body, and soul in gyms gives me the strength to go out and go hiking and take my kids on horseback rides and to jump out of planes and to rock climb and to enjoy life. We talk about like when I go to AA and I love AA, but a lot of people go to AA and that's their life. And AA is supposed to give you life. Just like the gym is not supposed to be your life, the gym is supposed to give you life. There's so many people two, three hours a day, seven days a week at the gym. Like, where's your wife? Where's your kids? Where's your, where's your life? This is coming from a fit guy. Look at him. This is coming. This isn't a cop out. When you hear that shit from me, you'll go, oh, that's a cop out, Neil. It isn't a cop out. 
So to take it to the next level, and I think we had this conversation as well, is as I remember talking to you when they said, well, I wonder if you could train hard enough four days a week that you could be stay healthy and go at Eastman Fitness. We're open Monday through Thursday. Oh, yeah. Because I want the people who train to take that strength that we give them in the gym and go and enjoy life out there. That's, and so far, it's been all right. Isn't that the point? And usually, it's an active thing out there. It's not like, you know, I like to use my strength out there, but the point Without is... Without strength, you have is, none to give. Right. And giving is the point. Give to others. I remember we had that... Uh, with Neil here, we had that big windstorm here, and shit was everywhere, and... He, we came into training, he said, okay, take all that strength we've taught you in here and go help your community. Shut the gym down and send us out to do service work. That was cool. That was pretty awesome. Do you remember that time we were all, I think it was your idea, because that same year we had some floods, and you're like, let's go do some sandbags. And I was like, yeah. hell yeah. I was like, I we we do some of that stuff. That's cool. <laughs> That's the point, right? Yeah. Without strength, you have none to give. You know, one of the things I've, I've always admired about you is your honesty. Um, and that honesty doesn't always serve you in the best ways immediately. Right. But I have noticed that it does serve you down the road because, I mean, immediately you'll say something that somebody disagrees with. I've even been on the other side of that and I've been like, hey, damn it. And then we've had a little confrontation. And, um, of course, I've, I've forgiven and forgotten all that, of course. And not that I had anything to forgive, but I just wanted you to know that's not in my heart anymore. But um, is honesty a piece of this in your mind? Absolutely. So I like to think of myself like a, when I was an addict, I was a filing cabinet, right? I kept secrets, I kept lies, and I kept filing lies and lies and lies and lies, and, and life got really heavy. And now for me, I'm not equipped. I found that my soul is not equipped to hold on to things. And the only way I know how to do that is to try and say it as nice as possible as soon as possible, whether somebody has harmed me and I say, hey, I don't like that, or I've harmed them, I try and apologize as, as soon as possible. And then telling people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. And sometimes that sucks and sometimes I get in trouble for it, but almost all the time it comes back around and they end up thanking me. Yeah. And, and so I've just found that my job, especially working with high risk individuals is my job isn't to make friends, it's to save lives. And that's not always easy. People don't love it when I try to become honest with them. I was trying to be honest with a guy this morning. I told him I, I thought he'd become weak and that that wasn't going to serve him. He needed to build up some of his strength. And I was surprised to watch him um, sidestep me. I was surprised to watch him go, oh, it was just to have, I think he said he had ankle pain. And I thought, what a thing to tell your trainer. You might, you might be able to get away with that, saying it to a brand spanking new trainer, but I got a few miles on me. Yeah. You're not gonna look at me and tell me you're not weak. I know weak, you know, I know it. Mm -hmm. I, I've lived it, I've seen it, I know weak. And I, always, I thought, uh-oh, this guy's not gonna go there, not today. He's not honest enough. He needs to be able to look at himself in the mirror, and I don't know how those words come out of his mouth. I thought, wow, I, I you say it to me if you want to, but I hope you don't. I hope you don't mean it in your whole in your soul. Yeah, that's the other thing is is when you come into a gym like this, and you have a coach as invested as Neil, we know your behaviors. We see your hundred percent, and we know you can't give us hundred percent every day. But if we're giving you a suggestion to something, you should probably take a hard look at that, and. Uh, I, as a human being and as an athlete, look for that. Honesty. And I've, I've had, I've been blessed with very honest coaches. You know, my fight coach was uh, no gray area. It, it, you give me, he knows, he, he knew me better than I knew me. And he could pull things out of me that just blew my mind as soon as I got out of my own way. Right. Right. I, my I, ego, it's like, you don't know. Yeah. And then the, that little guy's like, yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he does. And he's right. Like, go around the corner and do the push-ups that he told you to do anyway so that nobody can see. <laughs> yeah. So honesty's a big part of it. I'd, li I'd like to think, 
If I were to, to write a book, I think I would start with honesty. But I might now start with show the hell up. Just get your ass in the door. Mm -hmm. And that door can be anywhere, right? Like, I, I, it, it doesn't matter if it's my door or not, but get yeah. your ass in the door. Uh, yeah, that's <clears> the <throat> other part. As a coach, too, if we're giving suggestions, I'm telling people, you need to get fit. They think I'm talking about coming to my gym. I don't care where you go. Go somewhere. I send people over here. I send people to KOA if they want kickboxing. I just want you. I want everybody to have what I learned here. Yeah. Fitness is a piece of this journey, and I don't care what journey you're on. You're going to need the vigor to do it. Yeah. You're going to need the capacity to do it. And the fewer corners you cut on that, the farther you'll go. Just bottom line. Just yep. bottom line. I, I see people talk about their spirituality and and how great it is and this and that. Or I've sat in it. In, it's an actually a workout um, recovery deal. And this bigger lady really bigger lady was sitting there and she said, I don't understand addiction, but I'm just here to support my son. And I'm looking at her like, uh, try not eating carbs for two days and tell me how you feel. Yeah. You want to understand it? Yeah. I can, I can magnify Like, it are you me. really that blind? You know, <clears throat> doctors, all these people overweight and preaching health. I have, it's like the more we can be honest if we have people being honest with with others but you need to be honest with yourself that's when it all really changed for me looking in the mirror and going okay what part of these are true and what part of these are not i have admired that about you and you've taken some really ugly close looks and i've, <laughs> I've loved how you've come out on that i've loved how you come out on that you caught me one time i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest with you about something one time rob comes up to me walks across the room and um I get migraines and sometimes with those migraines I used to take a, a hydrocodone and the thing about that was it turns out that that hydrocodone um, was something I would be taking whether I need it or not. I would feel a migraine coming and I'd be like, oh, let me do this because Imitrex is expensive, right? One day Rob comes over and I didn't think I had an issue at all, at all. And Rob comes walking over to me and he looks me in the eyes and he's like, do you remember this? Yeah, I think so. Dude, you're like, you're looking at me, you look at one, one of my eyes, and then you look at my other eye, and then you look at my other eye, and you're like, come here. And we come right over here, and you're like, you doing okay? And I'm like, yeah. And I, I kind of hadn't figured out what you're on to yet, but you're, and then you look a little deeper into my eyes, and you're like, are you sure? Are you, t you on anything? And then in my heart, I was like, actually, I am. How the hell does he know that? <laughs> a walking <laughs> drug detection. <laughs> He's like, I think you're, I sat down later that night and I had to take a really good, hard, strong look at myself. And I thought, I'm on the wrong path. And who else would know that better than a guy like this? So I don't know if I ever told you that, but that was a thing that put me on a cleaner path because I haven't had a hydrocodone since that prescription ran out. And maybe one or two that somebody handed me in that, in that off time, but I'm talking less than one in a decade or so, you know, or, or three great. in a decade or whatever. But it was because, um, A, I think, I think you projected enough love that I felt you. I felt your sincerity. I felt you go, hey, I'm concerned about you. Are you okay? And I lied my asshole off to you. I said no. <laughs> I'm like, you don't know anything. What are you talking about? And I'm surprised you're not like laughing at me, but I can feel your love. I can feel, I can feel your sincerity, and I've always admired that about you. And, and thank you for it, because I don't know how far down that road I would have gone, but I can tell you I was, I was far enough down it that I didn't recognize I was on it. So That's the hard part. That's the tricky part. Yeah. Yeah, and I heard a guy do that this morning, and I, I'm wondering if it doesn't just pop up in all different parts of life. What's your message? Do, do you have a message? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I, I know I've watched you give a talk. Like I, I saw this talk that you were in front of a bunch of high school kids and that. Can, can you maybe disseminate and, and give us the core of what that message is? Or maybe we already have talked about it. Yeah, we've <laughs> talked about it a little bit, but just in general, if I were to go back to my six-year-old self, or if I were to go back to high school, if I were to learn any learn anything it would be to not sweep anything under the rug handle life as it comes and uh learn to talk to people surround yourself with people who are gonna 
take what you tell them and find solutions and not use it against you. Um, I think our youth right now are so busy trying to fit in that they lose their core values and they lose their identity. And uh, it's causing a lot of problems. And it, it, that's what it did for me. I got bullied, so I figured I'd be friends with the bullies. I'd be friends with everybody constantly, you know, hanging out with my LDS friends, hanging out with the gangsters. If you grew up in the 90s, you know what I'm talking about. And the skaters and this and that. And then I'd get home and I'd be like, oh, who am I? You know, and it was just like the biggest thing for me is I filled, I felt like I had this hole in my soul and I constantly filled it with people, places, and things like the nice car, the nice clothes, the cute girlfriend, hang, you know, being a popular guy, but all that stuff can go away. And at the end of the day, I was left empty. So loving the person that's looking back in the mirror, finding a way to do that is priceless. And the sooner you do it, the better. And, uh, one big thing that was told to me a while ago is you're only as sick as your secrets. And, uh, so I Hold try on, not. I gotta sit in that for one second. I, like, you can't just drop a bomb like that and just <laughs> move on. I gotta sit in that for a second. You are only as sick as your secrets. Gosh, damn. Okay, I, have, I will process that, but that one hit me. So, and I do those types of things. I find the strength and the courage and the real confidence. We can all fake confidence. But when you're in the gym and you start getting healthier and then you smash your first workout ever, that's real confidence. And that gives me the courage to go out and confront my demons and life as it comes. I don't avoid it. I feel like anxiety, and I'm that guy that when I would get anxiety, I would be in the fetal position. I'm 30 years old and the only person I could see was my mom, okay? So when I say this, I do know what anxiety feels like more than most. With that being said, I feel like we have signed off on allowing people to feel a certain way rather than like if your kid sucks at math, what do you make him do? Study. If your kid has anxiety, what do you do? Give him a pill and protect him. Like where's the self-study? Where's the life skills training? So they need to work on their, and you need to work on your, your, your fears and your anxieties so that it never blows up into this giant monster in the back of the room. So you may feel anxious, whatever made you feel anxious, know your triggers, go and face it. Stand and fight is what I call it. Well, martial arts time. taught me, yeah. Martial arts taught me how to fight and it just is really the imaginary demons that I deal with on a daily basis. Well, and you guys do some interesting things too because it's not just fitness for you. There's, there's horses, there's martial arts. Tell me all the different ways that you so, guys approach this. We have... <clears throat> We spend a lot of the time out of the gym as well, so we do fitness stuff, boxing, MMA, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, trail racing. We have a co-ed soccer team. Um, then we have a farm that we do equine therapy. We have goats that can also work as uh, therapy animals, um, chickens, garden. Um, so for me, it was fitness, but I know not for everybody, it's not going to be fitness. So we wanted to have as many avenues as possible. So whether it be art, poetry, music, um, we don't care what it is. We just want you to be brave enough to try it and reach out and do something. And uh, I think anybody on the face of the planet gets a little bit stronger when you're healthy, period. Healthy mentally, physically, yeah. emotionally, mm -hmm. etc. Lifting heavy stuff makes you stronger mentally yeah so, so there's two even if that's just confronting a bully that's lifting I'm, heavy right yeah so i remember the first time i was going to go get a drink during a workout and neil said no 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 no. once you're in the workout you need to keep going until that thing's done and uh so i call it adult binkies you need to leave your binky at the door and your will be and <laughs> be prepared to suffer because if your workout's 45 minutes i don't care how hard you work you're not going to die so what if your car breaks down and you're two miles away and it's freezing cold outside? Are you going to sit and freeze to death or are you going to get out and you're going to go run? And uh, that is something that you taught me. And so I went and spent a lot of time shirt off running in the snow to make sure I was prepared for the day. I Dude, I've done to a bunch of that stuff. I know. <laughs> is that what you guys were doing last year? I saw these things where you guys were jumping in a lake. You would run to a lake. So we do polar plunges. 
in like deathly freezing waters. It was snow on the ground when I saw you guys yeah. doing it. You ran there, like it was miles yeah. to run there. And then uh, I actually, and you should come with me next time, we go do Indian sweats in a real sweat lodge, in a real ceremony. They do their war cries and you learn how to do hard stuff in a safe environment. Oh man. It's a... Uh, I'll do it. I mean, I might have to so save some money for a while, but I'll do it. I'll, I'll get there. No, it's free. Yeah. I'm in the 100%. <laughs> it's free. I love the pain. I but love yeah. the pain. So the polar plunge, it's like cryotherapy, right? It's, it's beneficial <clears> to your system. But the other part of that is getting past the fear of getting into a freezing cold lake. Yeah. You know? I've so. found, I don't know about you, but I've found that the fear makes it worse. If you walk in and suspend your fear, just go, all right, I'm going to be afraid um, 10 minutes from now, but right now there's, it, the, the fear doesn't really serve me. Mm -hmm. You walk in, let your fear go, just experience the thing and get back out. It's weird. You never feel it. Yeah. You're just there. You're part of it. The fear is what triggers all the pain. It's weird. So I think that's, that's the point. The more you face it, the less power it has. Yeah. With anxiety, with depression, addiction. Yeah, not being in, in shape. Yeah. I watch I watched this lady yesterday. She's a cancer survivor. Just this year, finished chemo. You know, we're we're in October, late October, and she just finished it um, April. And she's in there stomping some workouts yesterday. And and our workouts, they're no joke. Mm -hmm. like, you don't walk in here and just stomp one of these things. Yeah. She walks in yesterday for her fourth time, third or fourth time. Um, it wasn't here. It was another place that I do stuff and. Um, she had all kinds of fear in her eyes, but I just loved her resolve. She just showed up and did, and she had the courage to back off a little, because there's also a little piece of people that make some fear it, and so they pour on harder, like you said, just come in and do what you, what, you know, make it little. And she goes, uh, she came in, she worked out hard, and she quit early, because she knew she had to, and I was like, you're going to make it. And of course, you don't cure cancer without that mindset, so I'm sure that had a lot to do with it, but... I was so impressed with that. She just lets the fear go. You can too. Mm -hmm. Like when you, you jumped out of a plane last week. We, we tried to do this last week. Rob's like, well, I got to jump out of a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. Um, you just let it go, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can be, have some anxiety and some fear until you're out of the plane. Then you got about 60 seconds to figure that out. <laughs> or just enjoy the ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy the ride. Doesn't matter. Jump in the gym anyway. Yeah. Um, anything I can do to promote you? What, where are you? How do people get a hold of you? I know we we announced that at the beginning, but it wouldn't hurt us to put it here at the end. Um, I'm. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Coach Eastman Eight, and then that has links to all of my info. And um, I do a lot of motivational speaking to youth groups, to religious groups, to school groups. So if you have uh, anything that you're in need of that way, I would love to come and speak to whatever group you have, businesses. Um, my story covers uh, the highest level of politics and religion to the crack house. So everything in between. Um, it really I've does. Lived it. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, so it's um, an interesting it's a pretty story. Wild one. I think, though, that that puts you in a really unique position to help people. And I know that's in your heart. Mm -hmm. So look Rob up when, uh, or if you need, have needs or. Maybe you just want to kick in the butt. You're pretty good for that, yeah. too. Yeah, we're always looking for wrestlers. So if you have any kids that are uh, giving you a hard time, get them into our camps, and we teach a lot of uh, psychology through fitness. So um, other than that, I'm a coach at Bountiful High. If you have a Bountiful High student, male or female, let's get them wrestling. And, um, really also female? Hickory. Yeah, they just allowed that. Yeah. Wow, outstanding. So we've got a few three girls in the room right now. and You're kidding me. Mm, that's big time. They're tough, too. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have so. been embarrassing. I, I, A, wouldn't have known where to put my hands because you're not checking her oil. You're not, yeah, right? No. And then um, that's, a, that's a wrestling move that my coach would always scream from the side of the, of the mat. The high Jackie's crack. oil! <laughs> and I would also be embarrassed to be beat by yeah. one. But I would take it on the chin because that's how you improve. Hey, but. thanks for coming and talking to us. Yeah, I love you, man. Love you, too. You're great. Appreciate it.